My name is Cy Horton and I'm an application engineer for our 3D Doc team here at Faro UK. During this tutorial what I'd like to show you are the new enhancements to WebShare Cloud 2 and specifically the new 3D Point Cloud features. The first thing to highlight is where you can get more information about WebShare Cloud. If you go to the faro.com website, go to Faro Software and Scene WebShare Cloud you'll find all the information you need to know about WebShare Cloud including a demo.websharecloud.com server so you can go on and have a play with some of the projects on there. In addition to this we also have the offer of the based package and if you weren't aware we changed the pricing a while back to be a 790 euro price per year that's based on a 50 gig storage limit and 50 gigabytes of downloads per month and that's typically good for around 500 scans over and above that you then pay an additional 10 cents per gigabyte per month so it's really up to you to manage the projects manage who has access to those projects and how long you leave them on the WebShare cloud environment so if I go to my demo site here you can see I've got a single scan now as you may have already seen during the Faro scene tutorials and the Faro scene LT tutorials the upload of the data has not changed you create your project you load in your scans, you register, you perform any trimming or clipping as you see fit and then you set your project up, create the project and upload it to your WebShare Cloud domain. Now typically, as you can see at the top, I've got faro and shorten.websharecloud.com so this section here would be replaced with your company name and only you would have access to that domain along with any customers that you decide to add or any feature projects that you decide to put on or public projects so if you're inviting potential clients along to look at the kind of work you can do without creating them as a user you can send them to your home page and have a feature project as I've got here and down below have a series of public projects so the main aim of this tutorial is to look at the new 3D point cloud functionality I've already taken the liberty of uploading a couple of projects and now I need to go and decide which ones I would like to have that 3D functionality. To do that, I'm already logged into my account, but if I go to the administration setup, the main area in here being your dashboard. This is where you're gonna monitor all the projects that you've uploaded, how many people have downloaded them, and more importantly, how much money it's costing you on a month by month basis. Here you can see I've got three projects loaded, and you can see the cost per month based on the standard package the amount of download traffic I've had on this particular account, the storage I've used, and the amount of scans I've got in the system. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll then see we've got a whole bunch of other information down here, such as your traffic details, so what you've got included in your daily traffic, how much you've used, how often and whereabouts the traffic is being downloaded, so you can keep a track on that. As we move down, we've then got more information down to storage details, what you've got on the system, how it's been accessed, where it's been accessed, when it's been uploaded, when it's been used. And down at the very bottom, we have the budget details. So these are the amount of scans you have, how much you've uploaded, whether you've exceeded, and roughly how much you're gonna be charged for this additional storage. Now when you're creating the 3D point cloud, you actually have to confirm that you accept any additional charges to your budget. So I'll go through that very shortly. Now we're going to go into our project management section and look at setting up a 3D point cloud of one of the projects I've already got in the system. Here you can clearly see I've got two projects. One of them I've set up as a feature project. I've also created the 3D data for that already. So you can see that here as a tick. We've then got this second project where I don't have any 3D data assigned. So all we're going to do is over on the right hand side you'll notice we've got this create 3D data icon that we simply click. When we've clicked that option it then asks us to select the project for which we want to create the 3D point cloud. I'm going to create it on this particular one here because I haven't got it created already. The next option here as I mentioned is to confirm the cost. If I click on that button you'll see that this action will debit your processing budget with four scans. So on top of your standard package, you also then get 100 free scans per month as 3D scans. And this is on a creation basis. So 
if I uploaded a project of 99 scans, I click the Create 3D button, I would then get those 99 scans created for free. Obviously then I'm adding to my storage facility, so were I to go over my normal 50 gig limit, that would incur a cost at 10 cents per gigabyte, as already discussed. If during the course of the month, I upload 99 scans first off, and then I upload another project with 101 scans, in effect, I'd only pay for the creation of 100 scans, because I get the 100 scans free per month. If you need to know more information about the pricing of this, then please speak to your local account manager. You will also need to be a project manager on the system in order to do this. So it means you can't have users going in and creating 3D point clouds of every single job you've got on WebShare Cloud just because they think it looks nice. And this is why we have a confirm option here. But I can confirm that these four scans, if they're within the rules that I've just stated, will be added to my budget. I can then also set the color mode as to what I want to create, and all I do is click OK. The system then, in the background, will go and create those scans for you. You can keep an eye on that by going into the project management or going into your job queue. It depends on time as to how many scans you've got updated. But I think on this particular job here, with 40 odd scans, it only took around an hour to create. We then also have the option to turn off the 3D data on a temporary basis, because obviously creating it takes time. If I delete it, I'd have to recreate it all over again. So what we can do is if we go to the access controls, in here you can see I've got my privacy options set up. So this particular project is a public project on my home page. This particular one is a private project, so you would have to be invited along to this project using your email address as I've previously covered. Here I've got the 3D view enabled, but if I want to temporarily turn that off, if I just click on the icon, you can see that it's turned off temporarily. So if I want to turn it back on, I just click to toggle that and it's turned back on, which means the users of this particular project will have access to the 3D. So those are the basic principles of setting up your 3D and also enabling it, turning it on and off and the costs associated with it. So now what we'll do is we'll go into a project and we'll have a look at some of the navigation options. So I've gone back to my home screen now and we've got this project here. So if I click on the yellow folder icon to load the project in, I've got my overview map exactly the same as you'd expect. So I'm just going to look for a particular scan to pick on. I'm going to go for this one down here. If I click on it, we've obviously got the panorama view that we had before, but we've now also got this 3D icon. So if I click on the 3D icon, what that's going to do is load in the point cloud in the background. And down here in the bottom right hand corner, you can see it's loading in that point cloud into the view. Now the one thing I'm going to do is turn off all my scan positions by clicking on the options button down here and clicking on the scan positions icon and then closing that down. So a couple of mouse commands here to navigate. We can use the scroll wheel to scroll in and scroll out and then there's a slight refresh. We can use the left mouse button to rotate left or rotate right or if we want to pan we use the center wheel button to move left or move right. As within Faro scene, we can also use the W, the S, the A, the D, the R, the F, the I, the J, the K, and the L tools to navigate around within the point cloud. Again, very similar to Faro scene, if we hold down the shift key, then we move in twice as fast, or we rotate twice as fast. We can also use the arrows on the keyboard to move in and out as fast as we want to get ourselves into a position. Again, similar functionality to Faro. If we double click on a point, we'll zoom into that particular point and we're right in that view there. So we can navigate around the point cloud as much as we want. Or if we want to go back to a specific view, we could go back to our overview map, double click on the scan, and we're straight into that view again. Now at the top right hand side here, you can see that we've got the 3D icon. If at any point I click on that, it will revert me back to the panorama view of that particular location. And here you can see I've put in a dimension between these two gravestones. Now at the moment, I assumed that I clicked on the left hand side of that gravestone and on the right hand side of that gravestone, the dimension of which is 3.550 meters. I can't really tell whether that's correct or not in this particular view, because all I'm looking at is the panoramic view from the point cloud. 
But if I go to the 3D view now, and then I move in and move around, and then pan, pan around, what you can see is actually I missed the edge of that gravestone. So were I providing dimensions to a client, and I was reliant on my clicking in the point cloud, you can see I've actually got the dimension wrong. And you can only see that really in the 3D view. So it's a good way to navigate around and make sure you're putting things in the right places. Whilst we're in the 3D view as well, we can also use the coordinate picker by picking on any points and it will give us the X, Y, Z value of that particular point. Again, we can also use the annotation icon and annotate in the 3D view, which makes it a lot easier to put our annotation notes in the right location in the 3D view, or we can just cancel. One of the other benefits of using the 3D view is to help you create ortho photos. So if I go to my overview map, and what I'm going to do is I'd like to create an ortho photo of this wall here. So if I use the take ortho photo icon, I'm going to create a facade view from that point there to that point there. I can then adjust which direction I'm looking in. So I want to look at this particular wall. I can adjust my depth so I can look further away to pick up the wall. Then I can select my scans by clicking on the select scan icon. And I want that scan, that scan, and that scan to be included. I then set my elevation range. So here I can't really see my elevation range, but if I click on one of the scans, and I go to the 3D view for that scan, so I've just navigated up so I can see over the top of the wall there, and using the bar here, I can then very easily make sure I'm picking up the whole elevation of that particular wall in the 3D view before we then go on and set up the rest of the settings for our ortho photo. So again, another benefit of using the system in 3D. If we just cancel that now, one of the other things that we can do is if we go into any one of the scans and we view them in 3D, if I go to my settings and my scan view settings, as well as setting the resolution for our panorama image, down here we also have the option for the 3D view detail level. Now it depends what machine you're running on as to whether you're able to run at a very high setting. Or you can set the system to be automatic. So the system will look at the RAM you've got in your device, in your graphics card, and will try and optimise what you've got. But there's a few options here to suggest which settings are best for which device. So what I'll do now is move across to a tablet device and introduce you to some of the options you have for navigation with a touchscreen. I'm now on my Microsoft Surface Pro 3 tablet. So as you can see, I'm on the same project. So if I go into that project and pick up on any scan, using standard touchscreen technology, I can pinch, zoom and pan with a single finger. Or if I click on any of the icons, I can go to the 3D button again. This will load in. This one might be a little slower because I'm working off my Wi-Fi here, but it will still load in that 3D data. I don't need to wait for that data to load in. Straight away, just using single index finger, I can navigate around my point cloud and start to move around. The difference here is that we also have what we call a virtual joystick. So at any point when this data is loaded into the screen, if I click and hold with a single finger on the left or the right hand side of the screen, I get the virtual joystick which will allow me to move in or out of the point cloud. At the same time, I can use my other hand to navigate left and right around the point cloud. So on the left hand side of my screen here, if I click and hold, I get my virtual joystick where I can zoom in and I can zoom out, literally just by sliding my finger up and down the screen. And at the same time, I can start to navigate around the point cloud. So I can effectively go for a walk through the point cloud. So if we want to come down here and go for a walk through this door, we can do. Again, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to, but you're walking around and navigating within the point cloud virtually to give you complete control. So if we go through the door, and we'll come round to the right and into the main hall. So as you can see, it's fairly easy and fairly smooth to navigate around within your point cloud. And again, all the other settings that we had on the PC version, I'm using a Microsoft Surface Pro 3, I could use my iPad, but again, same technology. I can pinch to zoom in and out, 
I can move forward, I can move left, I can move right, I can double tap to focus on an icon and then navigate from that point forward. So we've got all the same functionality we'd normally have but we've got this added feature of the joystick which is a really great feature for ease of navigation. So that hopefully shows you the speed and ease of use of navigation on a tablet device. I'm now back on my PC. As with most things, the manuals in the Faro products are very good. So if I go to the help menu for WebShare Cloud 2 and specifically the navigation option, in here you can see all the navigation options both for your virtual joystick on your touchpad or using a standard mouse on a PC. Again, you could be doing this on a Macintosh based platform because we're working in the cloud. So I'd advise you to go and look at these and memorize all the best functions for moving around in the point cloud to make it look as good as possible. So just one final thing to highlight, if I go to my job queue, you can see that during this recording, I set this particular project to set up a project point cloud. And it took just under half an hour to do that. If I scroll down a little bit, what you can see is the project that we've just been looking at, which is this one here. I started it on the 17th at 8.13 and it finished on the 17th at just after 9 o'clock. So it's taken less than an hour and this particular job was about 40 odd scans. So it doesn't take very long at all to create your 3D data. So I think that about covers all the new functionality of WebShare Cloud 2, from how to create your 3D data, how to administer it, how to monitor your projects to see what you're doing, the costs involved for that, the navigation in 3D, and how you get the benefit of some of the existing tools by being able to see that data in 3D. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been of use, and please feel free to watch out for forthcoming movies. These will all be published on my YouTube channel, so please feel free to subscribe. I will also send out notifications via my Twitter account or on LinkedIn or on the laser scanning forum. If you're struggling with any aspects of scene, I would encourage you to use the knowledge base at faro.com. All these tutorials are linked to key cases on the knowledge base, plus a lot more tips and tricks. Thank you.